Good afternoon, everyone, and thank, thank you for joining us in Las Vegas and at the convention center that's really the center of the universe this week and home to CES, which is the world's largest trade show. You know, I've been here in Las Vegas countless times, and it's usually during our annual dealer meetings, and I usually start those out with a few bad jokes. So I have one for you this morning. This one's about focus and persistence, which I think will be appropriate for this press conference today. So, a duck walks into the bar at the Mandalay Bay. He asks the bartender, do you have any grapes? The bartender says to the duck, no. The duck thanks him and he leaves. The next day, the duck returns and asks, got any grapes? And again, the bartender tells him, no, this bar has never served grapes and never will serve grapes. The duck thanks him and leaves. The third day, the duck returns, but before he can say anything, the bartender starts yelling at him. Said, listen, duck, if you, have, <clears throat> if you ask me for grapes one more time, I'm going to nail your beak to the bar. The duck just sat there silent for a moment and asked the bartender, do you have any nails? The bartender got confused and he said, no. Good, said the duck. Got any grapes? <laughs> okay. That's the last one, I promise. But here's the connection. What I believe I'm going to tell you about today is really going to change our world and sooner rather than later. For years, the use of hydrogen gas to power automobiles has been seen by many smart people as a foolish quest. The point of view is reminiscent of the opinions 20 years ago of how the Prius hybrid was called by many as a science project that would never be economically feasible. The point is, is change takes persistence. Instead of turning out clever phrases, we at Toyota have been turning wheels with electricity. By combining hydrogen and oxygen in an inboard fuel cell system. Hydrogen, as we know, works beautifully with oxygen to create water and electricity and absolutely nothing more. Hydrogen is plentiful and there are many ways to produce it, and many of those are sustainable. And as we all know, a fuel cell is more efficient to operate than a gasoline engine, which means it requires less fuel to travel the same distance and again produces zero emissions. In 2015, we will bring this technology to market. Now that's not to say our work is done, and there are challenges ahead, two in particular. The first is building the vehicle at an affordable price. And the second is what are we doing to help build that critical hydrogen refueling infrastructure. So first things first. The car. For the last 20 years, Toyota's investment in fuel cell R&D has been massive. Since 2002, we've been testing and developing a series of fuel cell vehicles in North America. Now, during these 11 years and more than a million miles, we have dramatically reduced the cost of building a fuel cell powertrain. In fact, we estimate a 95% cost reduction in the powertrain and fuel tanks of the vehicle that we will launch in 2015 when you compare that to what it cost us to build the original Highlander fuel cell back in 2002. Now unveiled at the Tokyo Motor Show last November, this is a zero emission electric drive mid-sized four-door sedan. It produces sufficient electrical power to spin the electric motors for up to about 300 miles on a single fill-up, which only takes three to five minutes to refuel. Now, how this is accomplished is in no small part to 20 years of experience of hybrid technology, starting with the Prius. Let me give you an example. During the development of the second generation of Prius, Hybrid engineers reduced the size, the weight, the cost, and the expense of the main battery by using an advanced boost converter to raise overall system voltage. 
This same thinking was carried over to the fuel cells, where a new converter more than triples the system's voltage from the fuel cell to the electric motors. Now this saves weight, space, and considerable cost. The fuel cell actually sits under the front passenger seats, and the two tanks are just behind the rear seats. The stack will have a total output of more than 100 kilowatts. A fully fueled vehicle will be capable of supplying enough energy to power a house in a week, for a week, in an emergency, which is why our engineers are also looking to develop an external power supply device that can be used for home electric generation. Current generation hybrid components were used extensively in the fuel cell, including the electric motor, the power control, and the main battery. The result is a car that will have a cabin as quiet as a Lexus hybrid. In the prototype testing here in the U.S., we're seeing zero to 60 times in around 10 seconds and a top speed of over 100 miles per hour. So in other words, functionally, this is a regular car. Now what's not regular is its make a statement style. If the front end of the vehicle looks like its main purpose is to induce airflow under the hood, you're correct. A large flow of air is required to draw the heat from the fuel stack. Not only are these intakes critical to the system's cooling, but they're part of air management system that delivers excellent aerodynamics. The phrase, oxygen in, water out, in fact, was an important part of the overall style and theme. Literally, this car's form is based on function. Now, a closer examination, you'll notice that this, this is not really a car at all, but this is a mock-up of how the vehicle will look when it arrives. This car, on the other hand, isn't a car either. This is what we call an engineering mule, a Frankenstein, if you will. It's a platform, a powertrain, and borrowed parts that are stuffed into an existing car so that critical testing can be accomplished. Now, for more than a year, and still going on, this Frankenstein and three others like it have been subjected to critical on-road testing in North America. It's been involved in more than a week at Yellowknife Canada confirming early morning startups at minus 30 degrees centigrade. High altitude performance was gauged in the Rockies, while the streets of San Francisco were used to test steep, low speed hill climb from a sta standing start. And then last summer in Death Valley and then right here in Las Vegas, our system cooling and air cabin conditioning were severely tested. While on-road testing has been done in the US, Hundreds of thousands of miles are being logged in Japan, where complete powertrain systems are bench tested in extreme conditions. Now, not far away at our Higashi Fuji Safety Center, extensive crash testing has been ongoing for months. Now, safety is always a top priority, but as we learned with Prius, the introduction of game changing technology poses new challenges that will be fully tested in both labs and on highway environments. But like the Prius, this project has been fully in-house. From the start, we needed to invent the tools which to develop, build, and safety test a truly brand new exotic powertrain. By far, the biggest advances coming to market with a reasonably priced car have been re related to the materials, the design, and the manufacturing. The beauty is, is we have seen considerable improvement in all three of those areas, which is why we're so bullish on fuel cells. Toyota has been in the drive battery business for a long time. We love batteries. We're the world leader in hybrid electronics. The dedication to battery technology continues, but compared to battery electrics, the rate of cost reduction that we have seen in fuel cell electric technology has been staggering. That's why our hydrogen fuel cell electric vehicles 
will be in our future sooner than many people believe and in much greater numbers than anyone expected. Okay, so now for the second part of the challenge and frankly the biggest, the need for a convenient refueling infrastructure when we initially launch our vehicle in California. And this is where we've gotten a little bit of help from our friends. The success of the fuel cell technology will depend less on the genius of the car than on the entire ownership experience. And that's a very important point. As you can imagine, there are differing opinions on how or if the infrastructure can be built. Now, just a few years ago, Governor Schwarzenegger, Schwarzenegger promised a hydrogen highway of refueling stations running the entire length of California. The bad news is that currently there are only about 10 active hydrogen fuel cell stations in California. But there's more good news than bad. The state has recently approved more than $200 million in fueling for as many as 100 new stations, 20 by 2015 and 40 by 2016. Now, those numbers may sound small. But one thing we believe is that the issue for the infrastructure isn't about how many there are, but rather location, location, and location. Now, Toyota and the University of California, the Advanced Energy Program, collaborated on a spatial model that maps out specific distribution of stations. The locations considered a variety of data, including hybrid and electric ownership patterns, traffic patterns, population density, and so on. The model was based on the assumption that owners would want to reach a refueling station within six minutes of their home or work. What this model produced was an initial cluster map that identified only 68 station sites in the San Francisco Bay Area, Silicon Valley, Los Angeles, Orange, and San Diego counties. Now, if implemented, this system could handle a fuel cell population conservatively estimated at about 10,000 vehicles. And the study went further. By using this model, if every vehicle in the state of California ran on hydrogen, we could meet refueling logistics with only 15% of the nearly 10,000 gas stations that are currently operating in the state. We don't need a station on every corner. It's not about how many, it's about their location. And this model is being used by the California Energy Commission, the Governor's Zero Emission Vehicle Initiative, the California Air Resources Board, the U.S. Department of Energy, and the California Fuel Cell Partnership. Now, it's not done. They're not yet built, and there are still challenges ahead. But this is just one of the many initiatives that are going on right now, where solutions are being found through collaboration by government regulators, academia, car makers, and energy providers. Stay tuned because this infrastructure thing is going to happen. Now, not long ago, it was our plan to ease into the U.S. market, starting in California, with a fairly conservative and low volume. But things have quickly changed. Because of this vehicle's level of performance, its refinement, and its cost reductions have all evolved at a rapid rate. We in the U.S. have already asked our headquarters for substantially more volume than our original request. Now, we believe demand will outweigh our current plan. This will be a very special vehicle, and we believe that we can bring it to market at a very reasonable price for a lot of people. Specific volume for each global market will be announced not long from now, as will the name of the vehicle, that I believe this vehicle will be the Toyota car of the future. Technically, functionally, stylistically, 
our goal was not to reinvent the wheel. We just reinvented everything necessary to make them turn. So before I close, obviously I'm not going to be a headline or comedian here in Las Vegas, but I would ask all of you to please stop by the Toyota display to see two other star acts, the Fun V2 and the iRoad Concept Vehicle. I'm Bob Carter. Have a great time at the show tomorrow, and thank you for joining us this afternoon.